How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Well, welcome to our special service of carols and readings today. Usually around this time of the year, between the churches of Downpatrick and Berlee and Clock, we'd have a candlelit carol service. And in recent years, we've been very pleased to welcome the Lagan Vale Ensemble to play for us at those occasions. Well, we can't do that this year. This is such a different year. But we can have a special service together online. And today, in this service, we're going to listen to the Christmas story told through the familiar biblical readings, starting with the Old Testament prophecies of Isaiah, right through to the narrative of the birth of Jesus. And we'll listen too to the familiar carols played for us by our organists and also special tune on the bagpipes. But thank you for joining us. Let's worship God together. The reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen.
The reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. The royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down. But just as new branches sprout from a stump, so a new king will arise from among David's descendants. The Spirit of the Lord will give him wisdom and the knowledge and skill to rule his people. He will know the Lord's will and have reverence for him and find pleasure in obeying him. He will not judge by appearance or hearsay. He will judge the poor fairly and defend the rights of the helpless. At his command, the people will be punished and evil persons will die. He will rule his people with justice and integrity. Wolves and sheep will live together in peace and leopards will lie down with young goats. Calves and lion cubs will feed together and little children will take care of them. Cows and bears will eat together and their calves and cubs, cubs will lie down in peace. Lions will eat straw as cattle do. Even a baby will not be harmed if it plays near a poisonous snake. On Zion, God's sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. The land will be as full of knowledge of the Lord as the seas are full of water. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 5 Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain 
and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here endeth the reading. <laughs> A reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 26 to 35. In the sixth month of, angel, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a girl promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. The girl's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God.
Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to marry Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be pregnant, through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to, to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because she has conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, who will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel told him, and took Mary home as his wife. But they did not consummate the marriage until she had gave birth to a son, and they named him Jesus. The birth of Jesus Christ, read from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, from the English Standard Version. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quinarius was, co was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, 
and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even on to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. 
And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Amen. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, He was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. 
and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed into their own country by another way. The reading comes from John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into this world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And here endeth the reading. Well, let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank thee that at the darkest time of the year there comes to us the brightest festival. Let the gladness of its faith and the joy of its promise be warm within us. Let us believe its hope that sometime there shall be a world in which inhumanity is ended, a world of goodwill from which all cruelty is gone, a world in which the prophecies have found fulfillment, in which nations are at peace and hatred and strife are known no more. 
a world in which children's faces are bright like the face of the Christ child, and love and gentleness have everywhere prevailed. Let the darkness of our skies be cloven, let the angel of this hope appear, let the song be sung by the heavenly host, and let earth join in the chorus. May the Spirit of God be born in our hearts this day, the truth may direct us and love possess us. And all these prayers we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today and a big thank you to everyone who's helped in the making of this service. It wouldn't be possible without such a talented group of people, all of whom have taken part. And I want to thank Nigel and Margaret and Rosemary and Adele and Emma McConnell and Emma McCrudden and Noel and Mary and Robert for reading. I want to thank Laura Patterson and John Strain for playing the organ. I want to thank Jack for playing the trumpet, and I want to thank Laura and Neil for playing the bagpipes. So it's been a great service, and we look forward to our Christmas Eve service, which will go live at 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and our Christmas Day service, which will go live at 9.45 a.m. We wish everyone a happy Christmas, and take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Let's close with the benediction. O thou eternal wisdom, whom we partly know and partly do not know. O thou eternal justice, whom we partly acknowledge but never wholly obey. O thou eternal love, whom we love a little but fear to love too much. Open our minds that we may understand. Work in our wills that we may obey. Kindle our hearts that we may love thee. This Christmas and always. Amen.